Hello and welcome to the H News. We will see what has happened in Kenya's economy during the year of 2014. I am Han Ho Sung reporting about the economic situation of Kenya and how the country is meeting its macroeconomic objectives. First of all, in Kenya in fact has a really high unemployment rate which in 2013 it was as high as 40%. But recently in 2014, the unemployment rate decreased almost 27%, which now stands at 13%. This unemployment rate is higher than the country's average inflation rate, which is at 5.7%, which is a bit less than the modern GDP per capita. Kenya workers have demanded raises in their wages to fit with the changes in price. So rather than decreasing the workers' wages, firms fire their workers instead due to the fixed wage effect in the short term. We can see an increase in inflation and also unemployment rate, which is a cost-push inflation. There probably were events in 2013 that increased the price of resources in Kenya that decreased the aggregate supply. This is called a stagflation. Stagflation in any nation's economy may be bad, but there will be an increase in price at the same time as a decrease in the nation's output. Higher inflation rates attract higher rates of consumption due to people not wanting further inflation lessening the value of their money. Kenya's modern government spending rate is 30.5%. When those two are put together, we can see that Kenya has an outward shift in its aggregate demand. From the 4.6% of GDP growth, it shows that long-run aggregate demand and short-run aggregate demand also shifted out from the economic growth. But unemployment beyond the natural rate indicates that a short-run aggregate supply decreased from the long-run aggregate supply. So these people decided to save up money instead of borrowing it from the banks. The people that spend more money in the economy served an injection into the economy whereas people that saved up more money to spend were leakages out of the economy. Also in 2014, the national GDP increased by 4.6%, which we expected, but of an increase in the high-quality lifestyle of all civilians. But because the Gini index stood at 47.7, amazingly, we could see that most of the benefit of GDP growth went to the people who were wealthy, while the poor, poor have failed to see a positive and developing change in their quality of life. The high unemployment in Kenya would have obviously led to an increase in poverty in the country. There might have also been an increase in crime rates between the poor civilians and the riots. The high unemployment may have also caused people to increase illegal trades. The black market is where these illegal trades happen. Those civilians that are unemployed have to buy things from the black market because it is cheaper and it is also increased the possibility for these poor civilians to have a job. Because of this, the poor civilians would have been more economically challenged while the wealthy people of society would be able to experience more of the growth in GDP.